Well, good morning and welcome to the podcast. It's Monday and you're here with me, Jake from Harlow Town Fans TV, otherwise known as Foghorn. Now, apologies for last week. I couldn't get the video out and it was probably going to be my best show. I had a lot of content sent in. However, unfortunately, um, due to my iCloud, I couldn't get that out. Um, I did upload the bits of content to Twitter, if you haven't seen that already. Now, we're going to start off just looking into the scores. Uh, done it a bit differently. I've actually, rather than take videos, I've just uh, screenshotted the scores. If I have missed any out, I do apologise. So without further ado, let's look at the scores from the weekend. And then we'll go on to the stuff that I am going to mention to you. At the weekend, of course, Leighton Orient winning 3-1 against Bromley took the O's to the top of the league. Um, I was actually going to go to that game with my granddad, but instead I went to Harlow versus Tunbridge Angels, which you could see that if you were the eagle-eyed of you, um, that would have stood out with Harlow 1-1-0. Uh, also, Woodford beat Walthamstow 3-1 as well. And last week I did go to a game midweek, I won't disgrace too much of it, um, which you may have seen on Twitter, I went to uh, Enfield versus Leverstock Green at Harlow's Ground, as in Enfield 1893. Very good game and the goalkeeper was a very good laugh. Now, things I'm going to mention. Um, unfortunately, uh, I've got no Billingham Town content for you, um, but they did win 3-1 against Redcar from coming behind the season top of the league on Friday night. Now, I am looking to go to a Billingham Town game. Um, I was actually looking online at a few things amongst looking at trying to go to Portugal for England in the UEFA Nations League, which is probably a dream that will not be happening for that price. But I'm looking about March the 9th. It'll be a couple of weeks before I go to Burgess, no, sorry, Bognar away with Harlow. Um, I've looked at it and actually the train tickets are too expensive but you can get a coach from uh, London Victoria and that's 15 quid there and back um, and then the hotels will be in Middlesbrough but it's only like £4 to get a train from Billingham to Middlesbrough so that may be something that um, I will be doing but of course Billingham Town fans buy your merchandise um, that would be for your game against Crook Town, because obviously the hotel as well, if I want a hotel in Billingham, you're looking at like two, £300 for two nights. Unless I'm staying in an industrial site in Middlesbrough, I'm not too really sure if I want to do that. I've never been to Middlesbrough, so I don't know if that would be a good place to stay. Now, some news um, from the week um, that I know of. First of all, if you was at this game, or you've seen the footage, um, or you know anyone that was there. The Ebbsfleet goalkeeper um, jumped in to the Boreham Wood fans after the game the other day. I don't want to comment too much on it. I've seen a bit of footage, but like I say, I wasn't there. Uh, I'm not going to say this happened, this happened. And I quote, these are what the rumours are. These are not my opinions. Apparently the Boreham Wood fans are being racist to him. There's some people that are saying that um, 
day was just taking the mick out of his weight. I don't know what happened. So if you was at that game, please enlighten me what happened there and whether you thought it was justified for the goalkeeper to do that. Now, in a similar situation, I was at the game on Tuesday, on sorry, on Saturday, Harlow versus Tombridge, and I was recording a free kick. And do you know what? Nine times out of ten, you give players banter, and you get banter back. I wasn't horrible. I wasn't personally attacking anyone. All I said was, stop moaning, fella. It's a free kick. And the language that got sent to me, said to me, was absolutely vile. So then Q second and a half, all the crowd start making chants about him. And he's a bit of a stocky fella, sponsored by Greg's and stuff like that, which is banter. But unfortunately, that banter was brought onto that player from something that he did, which he probably shouldn't really have done. Um, it wasn't, if I would have gone, you F, you F in, um, you F in, see you next Tuesday, blah, blah, blah. Fair enough. Come on, take me round the car park. But I thought that was a bit unfair and unjust, but as a defender, I suppose you've lost the last three results and you lose your head a bit. And to be fair, second half, he didn't say anything. So, if he is watching this for whatever reason, I hope you're, uh, well, you probably ain't going to watch it, are you? Because you, you don't know the channel because you told me to put my camera away from when I was recording you. But, anyway, that's, I took it as banter. We gave the banter back. But, what's your opinions on the Epsilon keeper jumping into the crowd? And what happened? Let me know. Now, I don't want to always talk about Harlow Town. But something that has happened with Harlow Town recently, Fabian Sims has made his 250th appearance for the club. And that was marked on Saturday. And what a great servant for the club he has been. I will discuss more about the game um, a little bit later on. But congratulations to Fabian Sims. He could have actually left the club, which I didn't find out until I saw Danny Chapman's interview, which you will see a little bit of the, at the end. Um, that he could have left the club numerous times this season and he's rolled his sleeves up and stuck with the club. So thank you, Fabian Sims, for that. And congratulations on your 250 caps for the Harlow Town. And hopefully there'll be 250 more. Now... A petition that I have signed from um, for being sent to me. For those that don't know, the Premier League boss, I don't know his exact job title, Richard Scudamore, will be receiving a five million payout over five years from the Premier League clubs, all contributing around two hundred and fifty k. I think the richer clubs will pay more, and the not so rich clubs will pay less. Now, I've got no problem with um, somebody that's been doing their job and built the Premier League into what it is being today, getting a little bit of a thank you token. I've got no problems with that at all. But I think that should come from the FA. If all this money that the Premier League clubs are giving was put into grassroots football, how better would that be for grassroots football? or non, either from grassroots or non-league, because let's be honest about it. Professional footballers, and I'm not digging professional footballers, because they are highly talented. I'm not going to get into whether the wages are justified, that's a whole different story. But there, they play football, they do everything. Let's be honest, that everyone watching this, at one point in their life, would do for free. A chance to play for your club for free, you'd take it, wouldn't you? And they get paid ridiculous amounts of money. They train every day, they're full-time professionals, blah, 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 blah. And when you've got a semi-pro footballer, you've got somebody that's got a nine-to-five job that may have to lose money on their job if they don't have an understanding job, if they've got a far trip. So, for example, Met Police, if they, they can easily play Murphy Tiddle on a Tuesday night. For their Met Police players, that's potentially two days they've got to take off work. And if they're self-employed, like a builder or a plumber or something like that, they're not going to get paid. So I really believe that money should be put in to either grassroots from the bottom or non-league football. Or non-league football. 
Help clubs build up. Give that little bit of extra. Give the clubs that money and say, look, look at what your volunteers have done. Give your volunteers a grand or two grand each. Something like that. I don't know, but there is a petition about it, but it's not going to change anything. I'm not moaning at Richard Scudamore. He's had a really good job, and I'm not being funny. If any of you want to give me £5 million for doing such a good job on a podcast, I'll leave my bank account details at the bottom. Of course, that is tongue-in-cheek. You will not see my bank account details. And then let's talk on, personally, my biggest matter of the week. Before I do so, you might be wondering why I'm in a coat. The reason I'm in a coat is I've just realised I'm actually in a coat. Oh well, I'm in a coat. Now, the big story of the weekend, groundbreaking news. I was wrong. Mr. Optimistic, always believe, was pessimistic this weekend. I'm talk- for those that know me personally, you know I'm strictly talking about football here. We won. At home. Against Tombridge Angels. Who are second in the league. Who have got some very good players. We are bottom in the league. And we've not won at home all season. If you haven't seen my vlog, I'm going to end the vlog on a bit, of a Danny Ch- bit from Danny Chapman's interview with Ian Barnum from Harlow Town TV. And in my recorded footage of me going absolutely mental. And the play is going absolutely mental. Now, no one expected it to come. So I don't know whether that's why we did give him a bit of a shock. I don't know whether Tom Bridge turned, to the gap, turned up in the game thinking, do you know what, if we've not won at home all season, if we're not doing that great, at bottom of the league, we're going to tonk them. It could have easily been our boys thinking, right, we've got two ex-Harlow players and Alex Reid and Jared Small turning up. Do not let them leave here with three points. And do you know what, the more and more the game went on, do you know what? I'll be happy if a draw. Oh my God, we're still drawing. We're still drawing. We're still drawing. Oh my God, do you know what? If we could actually go and win this. And then we score. And I'll be totally honest with you. The player that scored it, Lawrence Fawn, I didn't even realise he'd come on the pitch because we were so engrossed in the atmosphere on the terrace. It felt like proper old Harlow Town. There weren't a lot of us, thank you wrong. There weren't six, seven hundred of us. There's only probably about 20, 30 of us on that terrace. But it felt like old times. But you'll see that at the end and you'll see exactly what I mean if you haven't seen it already. Now, this weekend, I've got two options. The first option, which is just finding a lift for, I've got everything else sorted that I need to get sorted will be Potter's Bar versus Harlow Town in the league, which will be away. Failing that, if I can't get there, there will be no midweek football for me this week, unfortunately, unless the reserves are playing, which I'm going to have a look at later. I will be attending the Barrow Farm Tenants Derby, as I have just called it and made up. As Enfield, who are one of our tenants, host Woodford, who are one of our tenants, in the league. So I could be going to that, and quite annoyingly, that's not Friday night, so I'd love that to be on the Friday night, or the Tuesday night, and not missed it if I went to Harlow. But unfortunately, you can't have it all. Now, I'm just gonna end it on saying thank you as always for watching. Thank you for the Billingham Town supporters who are buying my merchandise. And thank you to the ones that are waiting for their wages to come in or whatever to buy my merchandise. It really, really does help. As you can see, I've got hardly any subscribers. I've not got a Bentley outside and then a, a, mil- a million subscriber plaque. 
It's not about that. I know I'm working with a niche market, but you'll see that today I've actually discussed different points. If there's any points you want me to discuss next week, of course I'm not. I know a bit about non-league football, but I'm not a human encyclopedia of knowledge. I will miss things. If there's things that you want me to talk about, you can either uh, get me to discuss them and leave a comment in the section and I'll ask if I can ask it next week. Or equally, send me in a video of yourself. But thank you. That is enough for today. As always, it's been the podcast with me, Jake, otherwise known as Foghorn from Harley Town Fans TV. Thanks for watching. Have a good week. Stay lucky. And see you soon. Thank you. Well, I, I, think, I think we always we always want to try and go and get a win. But you're right. You're looking at it with 15 minutes to go, and you're thinking, okay, I'll take a point. You know, mm. from previous results we've had, and not not you know losing here every game so far this year. Um, but I think it was just the players themselves just all of a sudden realised, hold up a minute. You know, we can actually go and win it, win this game. Um, and it was it, there was a belief there that that's not been there for quite a few weeks. And again, you have to put that down to results that you, that you've had. Um, but they believed and, and hopefully that now that can be the turning point for us that hold up a minute yeah, we can we can get out of this you know we're not a million miles away but we have to cut out the mistakes that we've been making um, because we've been over this before you know you get punished at this level and today that was I think one of the parts of the difference as well is that we never made any mistakes and um, we was assured in, in most things in most things that we that we did so it's a, it's a great win we need we needed it, the players needed it, the supporters needed it, the club needed it in general. Um, and Go on! Oh, yeah. Yeah.